Coming up next on Hooten's Arkansas Football. Highlights from all the high school semifinal games on Friday night. Plus, Saturday afternoon's Class 4A state championship game. And we'll tell you who the finalists are for the prestigious State Farm Awards, honoring the state's top players and coaches of 2005. Hold on, another thrilling high school season comes to a crescendo next on Hooten's Arkansas Football. Now, Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooten's Arkansas Football. Hello and welcome to Hooten's Arkansas Football. It's the championship weekend in Little Rock. And coming up, we've got highlights from this afternoon's Class 4A state championship game, plus the AAA and AA semifinals. Now tonight, of course, Springdale, a big favorite in the 5A title game. But we're going to show you what happened last night and earlier this afternoon in the next 30 minutes on Hooten's Arkansas Football. We're at the Marketplace Grill one of Arkansas's favorite, uh, Arkansas football fans' favorite places to eat before or after the games or with the holidays here. It's a great place to meet family and friends. They have locations all around the state. We'll be talking about Marketplace coming up in a minute. But first, here's highlights of the Class 4A state championship game from this afternoon at War Memorial Stadium, and they're brought to you by First Security Bank. Watch the double pass! Greenwood's second-year coach Rick Jones had the Bulldogs back in the rock for a second straight season Saturday afternoon, taking on Moralton, which was making its first title game appearance since 1977. Both teams, members of the 4A West earlier this year, Greenwood mauled Moralton 50-13, but in the rematch, Moralton was ready. The Devil Dogs actually jumped to an early lead, but Greenwood came back, and in the third quarter, the Blue Bulldogs were clinging to a three-point lead, 28-25, and needing a big defensive stand. Moralton in scoring position on fourth and one. Cornerback Kyle Russell is stopped short by Greenwood's Cody Long. Big play for Greenwood's defense and a little later in the third quarter, State Farm 4A Offensive Player of the Year finalist Daniel Stegall gets hot. He finds Scott Lloyd. Then on the first play of the fourth quarter, Stegall fakes the dive to the middle and then keeps it around the end to put Greenwood up by 10. But Moralton would answer with great protection from 300-pound lineman Matt Garrett. While he holds his block, Russell is throwing deep to the end zone, and that's Tyler Stowball with the catch to make it a three-point game with one minute left. And you know what's coming next. Moralton's onside kick. It looks like the Devil Dogs might have it too. It's a dog pile for sure. But down inside there, Greenwood's big play man, Nathan Staten, has got it. And Greenwood has got a state championship. Final score, Greenwood 35, Moralton 32. We had a great season last year and made it here and fell a little short. And, you know, we had some, we lost some big, big-time playmakers uh, that were seniors last year. Uh, we had William Reiner moved in from Hackett. And then all our receivers, you know, I think Staten was the only one with a reception before the uh, season and they stepped up and did a great job. So Greenwood begins and ends the season as Hooten's Arkansas football number one team. The Bulldogs ran the table in the 4A West and won it all by beating Moralton for the second time this year. Moralton started its season in the Hootens.com kickoff classic, won six games in a row to make it to the state title game, and they'll be even better next year when they return most of their skill players. Batesville also started its season in the Hootens.com kickoff classic. The Pioneers will hang their hats next season on offense because they'll return most of their back Backfield. The Win Yellow Jackets were arguably the most talented team in the state again this year. Alma had another fine season, but Coach Frank Vines may be nearing the end of his career. The second five starts with Marion. The Patriots and 2,000-yard rusher Darcel Johnson will be moving up in classification next year. Meanwhile, Stuttgart drops down in classification and should make a deep playoff run. Magnolia starts the second ten, followed by the Badgers, the Billies, Fair, and Crossit. Whitehall's number 16, then it's the Golden Goblins, the Con the Chickasaws and West Helena. Arkadelphia won three of its final four games this year and return a solid quarterback and running game next season. Greenbrier's number 22, followed by Oak Grove, Bologna, and Nettleton. In the Class 5A state championship, the Springdale Bulldogs scored on the second play of the game against West Memphis. Damian Williams, who was voted the game's most valuable player, 
takes it 52 yards for the touchdown. That would be his first of four touchdowns on the night. On the ensuing kickoff, West Memphis can't handle it, and Josh Foyner, a sophomore, is going to recover in the end zone. It was 14 to nothing early Springdale. The Bulldog defense then held West Memphis to three and out, and on Springdale's first play of its second series, it's Williams on the reverse going all the way. Springdale was up 21 to nothing. West Memphis would keep it respectable in the second half, but Springdale, just like Greenwood, starts and finishes the season. Ranks number one by Hooton's Arkansas football. Final score, Springdale 54, West Memphis 20. Next, it's more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Highlights from the Class 3A semifinal games are straight ahead. And a little bit later, we'll tell you who the finalists are for the prestigious State Forum Awards, honoring Arkansas's top coaches and players in every classification. That's still ahead tonight on Hooton's Arkansas football. And we begin our Class 3A highlights on Mustang Mountain in North Little Rock. Defending state champ CAC against Athletic Ashdown. It was all tied up at 14 late in the second quarter with CAC facing fourth and goal at the one when Drew Stringfella finds the end zone that put the Mustangs up by seven at the break. In the second half, Ashdown would answer every CAC score. Tying it up at 21 in the third quarter. Then in the fourth quarter, watch this. Ashdown quarterback Shad Server tosses it to senior standout D. Williams. He's D1, and he drags CAC all the way inside the five. Server would sneak it in from there, and it's 28 to 28 midway through the fourth quarter. But it wouldn't take long for CAC to answer. Watch number two. That's Trent Morgan. It's sneaking out of the backfield. Now, look how wide open he is. And watch Morgan's move. Are you kidding me? The State Farm Class 3A Offensive Player of the Year finalist, and it's going to take a few Ashdown Panthers to put him on the ground, too. Now, how about Morgan's move again? Sweet. Two plays later, see number two again. The direct snap to Morgan, and he scores to put CAC back on top, 35 to 28. Now Ashtown would answer, cut it to one point, 35-34 with just a little over a minute left. And coach Todd Ledford elected to go for two and the possible win, but the pass is deflected by Morgan. Wow. CAC would return an onside kick to set the final score. Mustangs 42, Ashdown 34. In the other Class 3A semifinal, we go to Howard County, number one Nashville, making its 11th semi-appearance since 1993 and playing host to Pulaski Academy, looking for its second state championship in three years. Nashville jumped out early, though, 21 to nothing by halftime, and the Scrappers were looking for more. Pulaski Academy did a pretty good job of containing Scrapper standout A.J. Whitmore, but he's loose on this scramble to put Nashville in scoring position again. Now watch Whitmore. He zips one to Marco Scroggins for a nice gain. That set up this 30-yard field goal by D.J. Graham. That put Nashville up 24 to nothing in the third quarter. Then it looked like the Bruins were going to get something going. PA's junior quarterback, Stefan Lux, will buy some time and look deep. Brian Langford, he's behind the defense in the end zone, but he was called for pushing off. Take PA's points off the board, and it was more Nashville in the fourth quarter. J.J. Williams on the reverse, and he's gone. 25 yards for the touchdown, and the Nashville Scrappers are just dominating this one. P.A. would avoid the shutout, though. Lux hits Langford for the short touchdown. Then Lux going for two, rolling out, and will spot Cruz Williams. Sweet catch by the sophomore, but it was too little too late for Pulaski Academy, and the Nashville Scrappers are headed back to Little Rock for the first time since 2000. Final score, Nashville 31, Pulaski Academy 8. Let's go ahead and play next week. Want to? Arkansas football class 3A rankings exactly the same as a week ago. Nashville is back in the state title game for the first time since 2000. That was a dominating win over Pulaski Academy Friday night. CAC, the defending state champs, have won 38 games over the past three seasons. They started their year in the Hootens.com kickoff classic and will have a chance to repeat as state champs next Saturday night at War Memorial. Ashdown finished the year at number three. The Panthers enjoyed their best season in school history and they returned plenty of offensive talent 
talent next season. Pulaski Academy's offense absolutely could not get anything going at Nashville. Boonville was our preseason favorite. They graduate tons of talent and experience, but Coach Ken Rippey has decided to toughen his non-conference schedule in hopes of having the Bearcats ready for a deep playoff run in 2006. Osceola starts the second five, followed by Shiloh Christian. The Saints and Coach Josh Floyd will enter next season as one of the favorites to win it all. They return just about everybody on offense, including record-smashing quarterback Matt Simpson. Shiloh stunned Warren in the second round of the playoffs, but the Lumberjacks will have much more experience next year. Gravit was one of the Cinderella teams of AAA, and number 12, Clinton, was the other. Coach Chris DeFreen has the Clinton Yellow Jackets headed in the right direction after back-to-back playoff berths. Pokey finishes here at number 13, followed by the Rebels and the Greyhounds. Then it's Gosnell, Atkins, Paris, Harrisburg, and the Miners. Prairie Grove shared the one AAA title with Shallow this year. The Tigers are followed by Hoxie, Farmington, McGee, and P. Ridge to round out the top 25. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Highlights from last night's Class 2A semifinal games are coming up next. And a little later, we'll tell you who the finalists are for the State Farm Awards, honoring Arkansas's top coaches and players in each classification. That's all coming up on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas Football, brought to you by Sonic. 48 minutes, not one quarter, not two quarters, full quarters, with every ounce of ability you've got. All right? And remember, you're one step away from doing what a group of guys did 30 years ago in 1975, and they went on to win a state championship. And for the other Class 2A semifinal, we go back to Howard County, down to Derrick's, just next door to Nashville. The Outlaws looking for their first state title appearance since 1975 and playing host to undefeated Episcopal Collegiate. And Derrick's was pulling out all the stops. Sophomore quarterback Michael Nava hits Jimmy Ward. The hook and ladder, Marcus Green loose down the sidelines. This is Derek's first possession of the night. Then Nava will go off play action looking deep. That's Aaron Jackson and he's off to the races before Episcopal's Evan Bettis can track him down. Not before he's inside the 15 though and a couple of plays later check out Derek's offensive line. Bryce Keaton, Brandon White, Jonathan Fox, Steven Sitz and Jonathan Bennett they open the hole for Jordan Watson, 12-yard touchdown. Derricks was up 7 to nothing, and the Outlaws would get the ball back a little bit later, but Episcopal's defense is ready this time. Andrew Charleston with the penetration, and Edmund Jaskowicz with the fumble recovery. That would set up Episcopal Collegiate's first score. Bettis lunges in to make it 7-7, to and Episcopal would turn another Derricks turnover into a 13-7 to lead. But here come the Outlaws, Matt Darling with the pick, and he's headed the other way. Derricks is wanting to go to the big dance, and a couple of plays later, Nathan Stone, he won't be denied. The Outlaws take the lead for good and hold on for their first state title appearance in 30 years. Final score, Derricks 28, Episcopal Collegiate 19. In the other Class 2A semifinal, number five ranked Junction City on the road for the third week in a row. Looking to ring Charleston's bell Friday night, Coach David Carpenter leading Junction to their fifth straight semifinal appearance. But top ranked Charleston would score first on a nice drive. Quarterback Matt Stewart passes over the middle to sophomore Evan Potts. And a little later on fourth and one, Stewart runs hard inside the five, and that would set up Stewart for the touchdown. He gives Charleston an early 7-0 lead on Junction City. Now, in the second quarter, Charleston would add to its lead when Stewart hits junior Colt Rainwater in the end zone. The official said he had control, and Charleston is up 14-0. The Tigers would make it 17-0 before the break, and they were looking for more early in the third quarter now when Stewart rolls out and throws to the end zone. Jeremy Wynn. The Dragons were upset. They didn't see a catch, but the officials did, and Charleston was up 24 to nothing in the third quarter. Charleston's defense held Junction City to 105 yards rushing, and the Tigers will face Derricks next Saturday for the Class 2A state championship. Final score, Charleston 24, Junction City 8. Now listen, this celebration's great. I want you to imagine what it feel like we're doing this next Saturday afternoon. <laughs>
And here are Hooters Arkansas Football Class 2A rankings. Number one, Charleston again used its stingy defense and the phenomenal kicking game of Eddie Carmona to advance to the title game for the second season in a row. Second ranked, Derricks overcame three early turnovers Friday night to turn back Episcopal by nine. Derricks will make only their second state championship appearance in 30 years. They beat Norfolk for the state title back in 1975. Now listen to this, how much do coaches know about teams? Smackover was picked to finish last in their conference by the conference coaches in the 7AA East. But the Buckaroos end up number three in the state. Phenomenal year at Smackover. Right behind the Bucks for the past two state champions, Ryzen and Junction City. Number six, Harding Academy made its 23rd consecutive playoff appearance this season. Episcopal Collegiate had a good year, posting quality wins over Perryville, Mineral Springs, and Camden Harmony Grove, all of which finished the season in our top 20. Des Ark will try to rebuild next year with slashing quarterback Jason Dahl and speedy running back Ronnie Rowland returning. Cross County rounds out the top 10. Then it's Harmony Grove, Perryville, Hughes, Jessieville, and Lavaca. Gurdon started the season ranks number 13. The Go Devils finish at 16. Eudora's Badgers made some noise in 2005, losing close games to Ryzen and Junction City. And there are Mineral, EPC, and Mark Tree. Magnet Cove, Murfreesboro, and Clarendon are programs on the rise, while Hazen and Mount Ida round out the top 25. Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. We'll tell you who the finalists are for the State Farm Awards, honoring Arkansas's top coaches and players in every classification. That's next. It's Saturday night, and you're watching Hooton's Arkansas Football. Brought to you by State Farm. It's been a great year for Arkansas high school football, and for the second year in a row, State Farm and your local State Farm agents will honor the top players and coaches at the State Farm Awards. A nice banquet and award ceremony coming up on December 12th. You can see it televised right here on December the 17th, the State Farm Awards. An offensive, defensive, and coach of the year will be named for each classification, and here are the finalists for the 2005 State Farm Awards in Class 5A. The Offensive Player of the Year finalists are Springdale quarterback Mitch Mustaine and Springdale All-Purpose player Damian Williams, along with Benton quarterback Josh Langley. The Class 5A Defensive Player of the Year finalists are Van Steuben from North Little Rock, Marquette Williams of West Memphis, and Russellville linebacker Matt Kitchens. Coaching finalists in Class 5A are Little Rock Catholic's Scooter Register, Springdale's Gus Malzahn, and Forest City's first year man, Scott Reed. In class 4A, the State Farm Awards Offensive Player of the Year finalists are Greenwood quarterback, Daniel Stegall, Alma quarterback, Joseph Medeiros, and Moralton's 300 pound pancake maker, Matt Garrett. On defense, State Farm's class 4A finalists are LeKyron Pickett from Stuttgart, Hunter Platt of Batesville, and wins big boy, Lee Walker. Coaching finalists in 4A are Batesville's Dave King, along with championship game coaches Chris Hill of Moralton and Greenwood's Rick Jones, who won the award last year. The State Farm Awards Class 3A Offensive Player of the Year finalists are Boonville quarterback Derek Davis, CAC's Trent Morgan, and Newport's 2,500-yard rusher Quentin Alcorn. On defense in Class 3A, the State Farm finalists are Robbie Buckner of Ashdown, Nashville's run stopper, Kadem Ray, and Pulaski Academy's Stephen Newell. Play fast. The State Farm 3A Coach of the Year finalists are Shallow's Josh Floyd, Ashdown's Todd Ledford, and CAC's Tim Perry. And in Class 2A, the State Farm Offensive Player of the Year finalists are Perryville's Dustin McAnally, Charleston's winning quarterback, Matt Stewart, and Harding Academy gunner, Zach Tribble. The Defensive Player of the Year finalists in AA are Cross County's Kendall Boykin, Ryzen's red-headed man-child, Matt Ingram, and Episcopal Collegiate's Jason Jackson. Again, winners will be announced on Monday night, December the 12th, and you can see the State Farm Awards finalists and the winners on a special year-end show coming up December the 17th. The State Farm Awards 